welcome. So, uh, our next topic is going to be how to plan an awesome event. And here we have with us is uh, Diana Cunningham, who is the current group leader of the group at Columbus State Community College right here in town. Uh, she's bound to have a great presentation for us. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so as Gordon said, my name is Diana Cunningham. Um, kind of taking summer break. I was president last semester at Columbus State of the non-theists of CSCC. Uh, last year was my first conference ever, like my first experience doing anything within the atheist movement. Um, so, you know, it was just so awesome though. I took away so much information and energy that I ended up planning, with a lot of help, of course, um, a flying spaghetti monster spaghetti dinner to benefit the Mid-Ohio Food Bank. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it ended up being so successful that we decided to make it an annual thing. Um, so I hope that you all are able to take away as much inspiration and energy from this year's conference as I did from last year's and this year's as well. Um, and I will be using that dinner as an example just throughout the talk. Um, on some things I will be telling you do what I did because it worked. Um, some things I'll be telling you don't do what I did because it didn't work. And, I mean, I made plenty of mistakes. They happen, um, especially first time doing anything. And uh, it's more that the dinner was so awesome itself that I get to pretend to be an expert at event planning. So, um, game face on. <laughs> event planning. It seems like a lot to take on, mostly because it is, or it can be. Um, however, there are ways to break it down into more manageable pieces that, when you put it together, add up to a successful event. Um, of course, why do we need to have events? I mean, I know that I personally would rather just stay in my cave with my internets and not have to interact with anybody, <laughs> but that doesn't really accomplish anything. So, given that human beings are allegedly social creatures, <laughs> um, doing things with other people is generally a good thing. Um, and when several people are working toward a positive goal, the outcome is usually successful, both in the achievement of that goal and in bringing people in that group or community closer together. Um, so, which, you know, is preferable to that whole rugged individualism thing. I mean, you may call me I'm a socialist, but I'm not the only one. Um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> um, also, any event held openly in a public setting will help increase our profile as non-believers. So, um, when people see us not only not eating babies, but also doing normal human stuff, <laughs> Um, it helps our overall image, and I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but atheists have a little bit of a PR problem in this country. Like, just, just a little. Um, and events should be fun, like this one. We're having fun here, right? Everybody? Come on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, so there are several different kinds of events. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, more just a few general examples, types of events. Um, I mean, social events can be anything really. All events are social, but um, a social event is an event whose main purpose is socializing. So for example, there are several atheist meetup groups in Columbus, um, a couple of which involve just hanging out in a bar or restaurant once a week and talking to like-minded people. Um, because these events occur regularly, they don't involve as much planning once you get past the initial startup phase, um, but the groups wouldn't be so well established or attended if they weren't well planned at the beginning. Uh, community building will inevitably happen at any event that community members attend, but the purpose of a community building event is to encourage stronger ties between individuals and groups within the community. Um, you know, heathen bonding experiences. Um, for example, the Humanist Community of Central Ohio hosts an annual family picnic in the summer. Um, it's a great way to meet and hang out with fellow members of the godless community in a relaxed, family-friendly atmosphere. Um, as the mother of a mini-heathen, uh, I definitely appreciate the opportunity to bring her around others who share my worldview and values, especially while living in a ridiculously religious society like ours. Um, fundraisers can be a great way to raise money for group activities, such as attending conferences. Uh, charity events raise funds for a third party, 
such as the Flying Spaghetti Monster Spaghetti Dinner, uh, which, by the way, raised $1,884.04 and 360 pounds of food and personal care product donations for the food bank. So, yes, it was awesome. <laughs> Just had to brag a little bit. Um, service events provide volunteers to meet a community need, such as participating in the Adopt a Highway program to pick up roadside litter, um, volunteering in homeless shelters, food pantries, soup kitchens, so on. Um, edu ah. Educational events can be small, such as a few people meeting to discuss a certain book, article, or current event, or bigger, like bringing in a speaker to give a public talk, or, you know, a conference. Um, all of these events share basic planning steps, though time and effort on the part of the planners will vary based on size and scope of the event. Um, if you're planning a small get-together, you might not need all of the planning steps, but I'm pretty sure if you came to this talk, you're thinking of bigger events than your average meetup group, so that's what I'll be talking about from here on out. Um, before you can plan an event, you have to know what event you're going to plan, of course. Um, if you just want to replicate an event that somebody else has already done, this part's been done for you, so yay! Um, for those who want to boldly go where no humanist has gone before, this next part's for you. Oh, wait. That's the one I wanted. Um, you need ideas, and that's where brainstorming comes in. Uh, it can be done individually or as a group but I recommend group brainstorming sessions because people see things from different angles and chances are a group brainstorming session is going to end with more and or better ideas than an individual alone. Uh, mostly because a group can use their diverse experiences to build ideas that wouldn't necessarily occur to an individual. Um, I don't know that I would have thought of the FSM dinner if it hadn't been for the group brainstorming session we had at our meeting following last year's conference. Um, so thank you to James and Becca who are right here in the front row is my cheering section. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these guys actually started my group, um, the non-theists of CSCC. They were the original president and vice president. Um, they were with me at the conference last year, and uh, they also just got married last week. So let's give it up for them. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Um, so <laughs> But the most important part of any brainstorming session is, of course, getting the creative juices flowing. So feel free to start off with the most ridiculous things you can think of um, and go from there. So a meeting on the moon <laughs> may turn into a group trip to your local observatory or you know, inviting Neil deGrasse Tyson to come speak at your school. Um, <laughs> saddling up giant kittens to ride through the Forbidden Forest could lead to volunteering at your local animal shelter or planting trees for Earth Day or maybe just hosting a Harry Potter movie marathon. What else? Uh, get creative and magical things will happen. Um, when you find your awesome idea, share it. Sharing your idea is the best way to gauge interest, which will determine whether or not the event will actually happen. Because if nobody cares, it's not going to happen. Um, if you're looking to plan a large community event, get in touch with any and all atheist groups in your area. Um, the more people you talk to, the better. Off-campus groups are a great resource. Use them. Um, if no one else seems all that interested, save your idea for another time, because there might be a time down the road where it ends up generating more interest than it initially did. Um, so when everyone thinks it's a great idea and wants to get involved, that's where the fun starts. Um, in sharing your awesome idea, there will be probably be a wide range of interest levels. Tap the people who seem the most interested to start planning. Um, you may even have people volunteer to help you plan when you tell them your awesome idea and take them up on it. Um, once you have your planning committee, set up a way for members to communicate with each other, whether through email, a phone tree, smoke signals, social media. Um, you may even you know, set up a closed Facebook group. That's actually what I did for my volunteers last year. Um, it was just a way for us to communicate with just each other. Um, and this year we refined it a little bit by having a separate Facebook group for just the planning committee um, and then one for the volunteers so that we can have all the boring details just to the planners and have the people who just want to show up and be given something to do their own space. Um, I'm definitely not knocking this group of amazing people. It's important to let everyone decide their own level of involvement um, and work around that. If some people want to help by just attending the event, give them the information once the details are set and let them tell their friends and family about it. Um, 
Once you have your planning committee and mode of communication set, delegate. I, like, delegate, delegate, delegate. I cannot stress that enough. Um, I had a lot of help last year, and the event would not have been as successful as it was, or it might not have even happened if I didn't have the help that I did. Um, but even with all that help, I still spent the last two weeks running around like a crazy person, um, just completely losing my mind. Um, yeah, I really can't stress how important that is. If you take on too much, there's a huge chance that either some things won't get done or you'll break yourself. Um, I actually broke myself last year doing this, and um, it's not something I've really talked about publicly at all, but thanks to amazing people like JT Eberhard and Amanda Kneef and Sarah Molia, I feel a little bit more comfortable just sharing. Um, I actually had kind of a major breakdown after the dinner last year, and I'm not sure if it was just the stress or um, you know, just other things that I wasn't paying enough attention to, but long story short, I ended up in a crisis center, stayed in the crisis stabilization unit. It was not pretty. So um, don't do that to yourselves. It's not fun. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> this year, I have a project manager and group leaders who are in charge of managing the volunteers in specific areas of planning, like running the kitchen or programming for the evening, treasurers, marketing. Um, these guys are my VIP. And uh, you know, for more information on delegating, go see Liz's talk tomorrow morning. And my picture didn't come up. Well, yeah. Once you have your basic details on time and place, just advertise. It doesn't have to be a billboard, but if you're planning a big event and you have the resources, that's not a bad idea. Uh, the bulk of our advertising for the dinner last year was a Facebook event page. Um, people could just invite their friends, family, whoever they thought might be interested. Um, and one of our planning committee members distributed the information at the uh, First Unitarian Universalist Church here in Columbus. They're the ones that hosted the event for us. Um, so we ended up getting a decent turnout for minimal advertising. We had 137 people show up. Um, and just advertise however you can. If you have a planning budget, try to take out ads in a newspaper or local radio station. Um, if you're broke, just use the internet. They work. If you're planning an event that shows atheists in a positive light, which, unless you're planning a baby barbecue, should be the case. <laughs> 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 invite the media, um, and as, as soon as you have specifics, just let them know. Um, if you don't know how to write a press release, Google it, or ask volunteers if any of them have experience in writing press releases. Um, the What's that? Or the, or the SSA website, definitely. <laughs> um, so last year we didn't get the press release out in time, it was like a week before the event, so reporters had no chance to do anything. Um, so this year, yeah, we're going to release it a lot earlier. Um, another picture that didn't work. Oh well. Um, <laughs> collect and store as many necessary materials as possible before your event, and this will make it a lot easier when it's actually time for the event. Um, all the last minute details that come up will not be quite so stressful. Um, so, say last year, like I said, I was running around in the last two weeks just picking up items for the raffle, the silent auction, the food to be served. I actually ended up getting there late to the dinner, on the day of the dinner, with the food that they were supposed to be cooking for the people. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, so this year we're going to try to make sure that we have everything within 24 hours before the event. Um, you know, and if we can't store it at the church, we're going to ask them about that. But if we can't, then we'll just store it at people's houses and have everybody bring it the day of. Um, None of my pictures are working. <laughs> I need to talk to freedigitalphotos.net. Be like, why aren't my pictures working? Um, so there will be things that come up at the last minute um, that nobody thought of during the planning process. It, it happens, like any event that you plan, that will happen. I guarantee it. Um, if you have as much possible done before the event, the last minute details will be much, much easier. Um, you know, last year we planned to have food and drinks, but didn't think about things like sugar or sweetener for coffee or butter for bread or napkins. Not that kind of important. <laughs> um, so luckily some awesome individuals stepped up and made sure that we had those things while I was busy losing my mind. <laughs> so the day of the event, don't be like me. 
um, be on time or early if you can manage it. Um, you're going to want to do, to have as much time as possible to make sure everything's in order before people start showing up. Um, I will be the first to admit I am not that organized. Um, I made tons of notes during the planning process, but they were scattered around in different notebooks and post-it notes and napkins. Um, I think I wrote some in invisible ink because I can't seem to find them now. <laughs> and it's not helpful in the planning process this year. Um, or for anyone who wants to replicate the event and is asking for any kind of guidance. So just write everything down, even if it seems trivial. I will definitely be doing that this year. And keep it all in one place so you can refer back to it when you need to. Um, and more pictures that don't work. Uh, <laughs> So the day of the event, make sure any volunteers you might have know exactly what they'll be doing beforehand. Make a final schedule, distribute it, it'll go a lot smoother. Seriously? This was my fun picture of the guy who is uh, my project manager for this year with a little yarn flying spaghetti monster on the top of his head. and Because, you know, it's my have fun slide and we did have a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> 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 Definitely. Um, so, I mean, that's that's really the purpose of every event, I think. I mean, that's that's kind of how I see it, anyway. It's like you want to have fun. You want to bring people together. You want to enjoy yourselves. You want to have good memories. You know. Um, and finally, thank everyone involved. Uh, thank attendees for showing up. Thank speakers and performers. Thank donors, and especially thank awesome volunteers who help make your event a reality. Um, that's probably the most important thing of all. And thank you all for listening. Happy planning. <laughs> okay. So we have three minutes. Um, yes. I just want to make a quick comment. Sure. If you're doing any kind of event, our group, I just a suggestion for you guys. Um, we use Google Docs so that you don't lose papers. And that's yes. always available to you. Yeah, that actually, we, um, I used Google Docs for um, people to sign up for volunteer duties. Like, I, I listed them and people could add their own names and stuff. Yes? Uh, can you explain a little bit more about, about how the uh, spaghetti dinner raised money and what you did with it? Um, we raised money um, primarily from dinner tickets. Uh, we sold them for $10 for an adult, $5 for a children, or a children. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> We also had a raffle um, and a silent auction. Um, and then as far as the, the physical donations of food and personal care products, we just asked people to bring that. And people could get free raffle tickets for bringing in a certain number of donated items. Um, so that's where everything came from. Anyone else? Oh. James? In your brainstorming uh, session, how would you go about picking people? Because I mean, obviously, if you brainstorm with people that are think exactly like you do, you're in a very limited scope of what would be a good event, what wouldn't be. How would you go about picking the, you know, different types of personalities to go after? Um, honestly, I don't think that anybody's really exactly alike. Everybody has different experiences and, and will pull different things, different references. Um, so, and... Um, how important Or let me rephrase that. How rigorous do you need to do you think the research needs to be in, as far as the, the, the date and time of your event, so as to prevent um, other events, like overlap right. kind of thing? Um, it's it's pretty important. You'll want to check any kind of social schedules. Um, we ended up doing ours on a Thursday evening because no weekends were available, and it ended up working out okay. But yeah, you'll definitely want to check that out beforehand. Oh, sorry. Uh, since you were talking about flying bay monster beef, um, I had a comment that I see a lot of groups um, occasionally have religious students on campus who think that there is some sort of event to just attack religion. Um, so make sure you read up on history of flying bay monster. It's it's you know, criticizing religion in public schools. So if, if you do get um, people on campus who are extremely offended. You know, let them know what it, you're not trying to offend anybody. Yeah, definitely. That's that's important. Luckily, we didn't have that problem. We actually had some um, Christian and Jewish and Muslim people show up to the dinner, and you know, 
Yeah. Everything was cool? All right, one more question. Also, oh. I watch uh, Nico Holmes' TED Talks. TED Talks are awesome. <laughs> what was? The, uh, <laughs> he talks about uh, International Pastafarian Culture Day and how it originated. And oh, nice. So there's a TED Talk about International Pastafarian Day? International Day. Oh, Headgear Day. Like why, nice. Why he wore the, the bus shirt <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, I will have to look that up for sure. It's, it's Nico Alm, N-I-K-O-A-L-M. All right, thank all you. Right.